Hello. Hey, hey Hello. Kai, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Ready to talk about our new topic today, uh, 40 being the new sexy for women. Woohoo! 40 is the new sexy. Times are changing. When, you know, like this whole, like, um, this whole, you, you got up until you're 25 to, like, be amazing as a woman. <laughs> nah. Nah. Yeah. That's out the window. 40 is the new sexy. Have you seen J-Lo? Let's talk about that. Isn't she, like, 50? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, she looks really good. Like, it looks like she hasn't aged since she was, like, 30. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm noticing that being kind of a new popular thing, though. Like, I see these actresses and entertainers now that don't, they just stop aging at, like, I don't know, 25 to, like, 50. I don't know if there's new chemicals available or what's going on, but they just kind of stop aging and just stay, like, th this didn't happen when we, were, when we were kids. Like, Madonna was, like, one of the f only pop stars I remember kind of, like, staying kind of, like, sexy well into middle age whereas like the rest of them they had like that 10 year run and then they just kind of disappeared and you'd see them 15 years later and you're like ah oh, what the hell happened <laughs> that doesn't happen anymore like they just stay hot forever <laughs> yeah yeah i think jayla might be an exception she well i let me not even say that she's uh she's one of the exceptions um because we've got what do we have we've got angela angela bassett we have vivica mm -hmm. fox we have Iman, David Bowie's um, yeah. wife. What, what's that? Uh, the, the British lady who's kind of crazy, the supermodel. Naomi Campbell. She's, I saw a picture of her. I'm like, she's like 60 or 55 or something. Looks amazing. She looks nuts. Black don't crack. Yeah. But, um, but she, she is, she's still doing runway at her age. Holy Not God. even Kate Moss is doing that. Remember when Kate Moss like blew up? Yeah. I think we should start saying 50 is the new sexy. I just, I, get, I, I, just, I wanted to say 40 just because, like, I felt that might be, like, really, you know, part of the general, like. Yeah. Like, because, you know, we're talking about celebrities here. Celebrities yeah. are not aging. Female celebrities are not aging. But, you know, they got money. Botox is getting better and better every year. Mm. Plus, surgery is getting better and better every, every year. Although, I don't, it, it, it those plastic surgeons are like, they're like gods because these women look like they've never had anything done. I know. Do you, you, know you can tell. Now you can't. <laughs> well, you know person, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like the person you can really tell um, with is actually, you named her Madonna. Have you seen her lately? I haven't seen her in a while. Boy... Instagram Madonna. All of you out there, Instagram Madonna. Uh -oh. It is unbelievable. And I love Madonna. Like, I love Madonna. So it's a little heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time catches up to you. She's like 60 now, isn't she? 65? I don't know. She's like old. Like, she's old, old, like now. Not even like she middle age. She, she's older, you know? And, and, and there's nothing wrong with being older. I just kind of wit. I wonder... If like we, if women would just like accept that they're getting wrinkles and accept yeah. that they're getting older and take it as like a badge of honor rather than like, oh my God, I'm getting older. But I see myself doing it too. Like, I'm like, oh my God, is that a, well, is that yeah. a, you know? And I'm like, well, I've still got time. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's terrible. It's terrible. But, um. I hope that I can, you know, as I age, I can be like, I'm aging gracefully and I don't need to get Botox. Yeah. Um, I feel like one of the weird things I, that's, I don't know, about like these women staying sexy into like their late 40s, 50s, even pushing them to the 60s now. As I noticed with my girlfriend watching some of these reality TV shows like Real Housewives of Wherever, where they have women in that age range who I think some, a lot of them have work done, but they look really good. And multiple episodes I've just walked in casually and just seen like naked women like that are like middle-aged women just kind of acting like Girls Gone Wild videos. And I'm like, it's really weird seeing uh, middle-aged women kind of portrayed as sex symbols because it 
is just like a new thing, but they are sexy. And it's like, I'm not accustomed to seeing it because at first I'm just like, wow, that's a middle-aged woman. And I'm not used to see a middle-aged woman presented this way, but if it was like a 22 year old woman, I wouldn't think anything of it. Cause I'm just so used to seeing them presented in that manner. Yeah. 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 I mean like, yeah. Like what Beyonce, Beyonce is like what 40 and she, she just posts. never accepts a lot of anything, you know what I mean? And it's like, wow. Yeah. She's also an entertainer, but, all, but it's like, it is strange. You're right. Um, Cause like Madonna was doing that stuff. But Madonna's brand was like being provocative and pushing the envelope. But I don't feel like that's Beyonce's brand. So it's like seeing Beyonce nearing 40 kind of twerking or making a song about it and a video about it. It's like, wow, this is, is this going to be like new standard behavior for like middle-aged women? <laughs> like when, when some of the girls I went to high school with had kids early, like they're, they got kids that are about to go to college now. Are they going to be like doing videos on Instagram like twerking because <laughs> yeah yeah it's just kind of weird like I mean the time twerk, it's weird to me <laughs> yeah yeah I mean the times have kind of changed um in that works we're we're more of a hypersexual culture I think in terms of just like um exploitation of sex you know and 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 just um showing our sexuality. I feel like we grew up, you know, I know we're, we're, I think we're at least five years apart. Could be, yeah. I'm 30. Yeah. But, but you know, you know, what would you just say? You're 30? I said I'm 38. <laughs> oh, 30, okay. You're 30. But yes, we're a couple of years apart then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, I feel like we grew up in a time and were raised by, you know, parents who were relatively conservative. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying our era was completely conservative, because obviously I feel like every year and every generation is just a bit more hypersexual. But like, it, um, times are times are definitely different in that like we have fully understood that sex sells. I mean, considering we're now we now had to not we now had to, but we decided to change our name from what we had originally yeah. to kinky politics, you know, it was so what we had originally, everybody was really dry, but really cute, but still kind of like sexy. I don't know if you guys remember, um, two girls, one cup. <laughs> yeah. That was our generation. And that was a big deal then. I know like for a lot of people, that's like nothing, but if you ever Google two girls in one cup, yeah. So we had, we had titled our program for a second, two Dems and one, one cup, but we realized, we're, you know, we're both not really Democrats and, um, and we needed a better title. One that really would explain what we, um, what we would fully talk about, you know, and it's a little on the super hypersexualized side, you know, kinky politics. We definitely have had interesting um, people in our social media section where I had to delete some comments, oh. <laughs> you know, so, but I, 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 there's also on the flip side, I feel like what's wrong if, if 22 year olds are going to shake their ass like that. Mm. And listen, I don't shake my ass. I shake my ass for my husband. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I do that in the bedroom. You know what I mean? So there are certain things that I keep private, but I, I, but I do them, you know, and I, I'm at my age and I hope I'll continue to do them until I'm well into my seventies, you know? Yes. So, <laughs> you know, keep it alive, keep it alive. Right. So it's, but it's, so if we're in that same, if we're thinking in that same vein, yeah. what is wrong with, Beyonce twerking like any other 22 year old and making money off of it, securing that bag. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything wrong with it. I'm just not. <laughs> <cut to break. laughs> it's, you just got what? I'm just not. Yeah. It's like a new thing that uh, I guess I might have to get used to. It's like, as these pop stars I grew up with grow up too, they still keep doing what made them famous because that's their career. 
until until basically the knees give out. Like she's going to be twerking until the knees give out. So, and she's exceptional. She's yeah. an exceptional entertainer, exceptional dancer. And I was curious, what do you think her brand is? <sighs> oh, that's a good question. Um, making money. You, like you said, money. Beyonce. You said uh, Madonna's brand is more provocative, sexy. What's what's Beyonce? Well, no, Beyonce is. Like, I feel like Beyonce sells like sex appeal, but I don't feel like what Beyonce is doing is new or because when Madonna was doing it, it was new. It was shocking. But, you know, first Madonna did it. And then you had plenty of other artists like little Kim coming out with one titty out at the, the MTV movie, whatever those the awards were that one time, stuff like that. So nothing Beyonce has done is on that level. Um, like she's not shocking and offending anybody. Like her brand is to be family friendly. Um, but also, I don't know, her, her thing's kind of interesting to me because she tries to be kind of like portray herself as almost like this kind of like uh, pro revolutionary black voice at times whenever it's convenient. But then most of the time she's just trying to provide like a corporate family friendly image to make business deals. Yeah. So I don't know what that would make her brand, but <laughs> that's kind of what I've seen from her. Yeah. Yeah. She kind of has this, like, she's, she, I feel like she's one of those artists that everybody likes. Yeah. No, I, I don't know any person who's like, Oh no, I don't like Beyonce. It's like, if you don't like Beyonce, you must be a jackass. Like what's your problem? She yeah. kind of has this like, um, wholesome vibe about her i know if like if you criticize beyonce in any way shape or form it's almost seen as if you are criticizing women at whole or specifically black women as a whole like you are not allowed to criticize beyonce at all like she's off limits <laughs> i don't and know I, why but she is <laughs> i think because her brand her image her music transcends as much as i don't really want to admit that because I like Beyonce, but I also, on the flip side, I, I'm like, well, she's really good, but I don't understand why, like, there's so much hype about her. Like, I understand she's very, very good, and she is very talented, and I, her work ethic is amazing, but she transcends, like, blacks, whites, gays, Latino, it, 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 Australians, like, yeah. Beyonce, Beyonce's cut, like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, um, she kind of, she kind of does the, feel like the same thing that, like, Michael Jackson did at one point, mm -hmm. um, she just, she's, like, a, she supersedes, like, any, like, oh, I'm just an R&B musician, she literally is, like, an icon, like, a, like, a pop icon for the world, um, yeah. and I so like I think, Black women, I feel like black women have this, like, she's our, she's our, you know, um, figurehead, mm -hmm. you know, she's perfect, she's beautiful, she's talented, she's smart, she's a boss lady, and anybody who's trying to demean her or fuck with her, you fuck with us. Yeah. Even if we don't like her all the way, what's your reason for not liking her? Because, like, wow, I just don't get it. I don't get how anyone could be like, no, like. And really like Beyonce. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I, I don't really have any issue with Beyonce. The one thing I've kind of recently, because um, I've talked about Beyonce recently with my girlfriend a few times. The one thing that is kind of interesting to me is like how, for how famous she is, mm -hmm. she's very good at um, guarding her life. Like you don't really ever hear about Beyonce unless Beyonce wants you to hear about Beyonce. Like everything that comes out of her, camp I guess or about her life is like controlled by her like better than any celebrity I've ever seen like it's impressive I don't know how she pulls it off but other than that one incident with her sister and Jay-Z in that elevator but other than that you don't ever hear anything about Beyonce unless Beyonce puts it out for you to know <laughs> like, that is true you don't hear about her business you don't hear about the way she treats her employees or works with other people you Ellen. do hear that about other artists <laughs> yeah like, yeah, with everybody else, like, you always end up, like, hearing about some scandals they get into, some drop, like, just how they're just a monster behind the scenes, all that stuff. Beyonce, nothing. It's whatever Beyonce puts out, you hear. And it's like, yeah, that's true. when you control the narrative about you, like, 
you control how you're seen. It's a, it's pretty impressive. I mean, but Beyonce is like kind of branded herself to be a little bit to every woman in some capacity, like to be out there where every woman can kind of relate to Beyonce in some way, shape or form, which is amazing marketing. <laughs> amazing. I don't know like who, whose ideas those were that went into all that stuff, but cause I know she works with like a lot of writers and stuff and, uh, she has a team as they all do. So you never know who's kind of everything just kind of gets labeled as Beyonce, but you never know like who's making these decisions when you got that kind of, cause she's like a whole company at this point. Like she probably employs like hundreds of people and stuff. So I think yeah. I saw her daughter has her own, like her daughter has her own stylist and like makeup person already. And she's like six. Something like, oh. like that. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. imagine having a, my own stylist when I was like five years old. <laughs> Yeah, 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 marketing, huh? Marketing, but um, yeah, she, yeah, it's, it is, I think it is marketing, and, and she, yeah, she's interesting, she's interesting, but she's, she's into her 40s, I don't know if she's like, you know, mid 40s or whatever, but she's but still she's, doing the damn thing. Yeah, and she ain't stopping anytime soon, like, no. She's still oh just God, as popular as she's ever been. Yes, she is. She is. Holly Berry? What? She's 50? Yeah, she got shredded what? for some MMA movie she got coming out. Yes. I don't know if it's came out already or it's coming out soon. I don't know either. Yeah. Um, but I no follow way. her on Instagram. She just like stopped aging. <laughs> it's like, she's, she's incredibly beautiful. She's, in her, she's well into her 50s. Yeah. Um, Selma Hayek. You know, the, the one thing, though, with all these ladies, as they age and just remain, like, model beautiful, and Halle Berry's still doing, like, what is it, Revlon or Maybelline or whatever that – she's still doing those commercials. The one thing they all do, though, they refuse to let that hair go gray because <laughs> I, I think about that sometimes. Like, you look at all these people, and you're like, man, all these people are, like, 50, 60 years old, but none of them have gray hair. How's that possible? And never yeah. – like it doesn't dawn on me that people are dying their hair until you think about it. Like, wait a minute, nobody has gray hair in Hollywood. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Or they've got like a full head of hair and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. No guys in Hollywood bald. <laughs> right. Right. That's Except for the fat one. ones. Fat ones are allowed to. <laughs> right. You can't have the leading man going bald though. <laughs> huh? I said, you can't have the leading man going bald though. Well, you can remember who is it? Bruce Willis is the only one I know of. That's it. Yeah. But wasn't That's he's it. always been bald, though, hadn't he? Or always balding, like, even in the 80s, yeah. like, he barely had hair. Yes, because we saw that as really masculine. Like, our generation and prior saw that balding. It's really masculine. The Rock. The Rock Ooh, and Vin Diesel. Rock. I forgot about those two. Yeah, but they're... They're not really heroes. They're, like... They're not hero characters, are they? They're, they're not like leading men. They're, they are leading men, but they're not, they don't do like a lot of, for example, they don't like have a lot of storyline. No, they're, they're just they, badasses you know, they, will beat people up. <laughs> that's it, you know, they're more caricatures. I feel like they're hero caricatures. And some, get paid a lot of money. A bald head with a goatee just makes you look like you could fuck somebody up. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Masculinity. Yeah. That stone um, thing. <laughs> yeah. But you were saying about this whole gray hair, you know, lack of gray hair trend thing. Um, I would agree with that. I'm starting to see like a few gray hairs pop up and I'm just like, you want to die? And they're like strong gray hairs, like, yeah. like strong steel wool and just coming out with like absolute force. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? But it's not my time. I don't know. <laughs> I know. No, I'm too young. Oh my god. Um, but it's like, yeah, like what's wrong with gray hair? Is it gray hair takes us away from our youth? Is that 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 like we're worried? I guess women are worried, like what men will think or what it looks like in a. Because ultimately, it's like what will what what's still sexy or what's perceived as sexy, and in most cases, men de men determine what's perceived as sexy. So, um, 
I don't think a lot of men find gray hair sexy. Yeah, it's weird. Like, it's not something I would, I don't know. Like, it's not something I would say is going to add value. Like, I'm not going to think, oh, if you had gray hair, you'd be sexier. But I don't know if it's because I'm getting older. I don't think I would have felt this way when I was like 20. But I just randomly will kind of see women. Like, the other day we were at the, the grocery store. And I like kind of like elbowed my girlfriend. I'm like trying to get her to check this girl out. Because it was this older black lady. She looked like she was probably like, I don't know, 55, 60. Had her hair kind of like in braids. Had on a sundress. But her body was like insane. It was like the body of like a 24-year-old. Like it was just like crazy. And I was like, what the? And I'm looking at her and she's got like gray, gray braids. And but was attractive as hell. I was just like. This is not something that I would have ever thought I would like. You didn't see that when I was a kid. Like there was no sixty-year-old attractive women when I was growing up. Like it was like once you hit like forty and had like three kids, you put on like sixty pounds and you're done. Like you never lost the weight again and stayed attractive. Whereas like now. Oh my God! You're yeah. saying so much right now. I'm gonna crucify you. Hang on. First of all, it just been my hometown. <laughs> Let, let's go back to the black lady in the sundress and the 22 year old body. So are you saying this woman was so attractive because she had gray hair or because her body was the body of a 22 year old? I'm just saying if you're attractive, I don't think having gray hair is going to matter, but like, it's not your hair that's detracting from your attractiveness. Like that's why I don't understand the obsession with like coloring your hair. It's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, if you're wanting to remain attractive, like, whatever this lady did, which I'm sure was, like, eating healthy and staying fit is what you need to be doing. Don't worry about the gray hair. <laughs> like, worry about, like, taking care of your body if that's your concern. I'm not saying it should be your concern, but I'm saying if, if, you're, if your reasoning is to stay attractive, like, the gray hair is not the, the thing you need to focus on. <laughs> okay. And then the uh, Okay, fair enough. Good save. And the other thing is – the the body her body right you mentioned is a 22 year old body yeah now what is this about so it's like and 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 in contrast as well I shouldn't even say in contrast in conjunction with that you also mentioned you know you get when you get to around 40 50 you've had three kids you put on the weight you never lose that shit again your body's never good again so is that when you have a child you gain weight your body's now at an age and that's what determines how attractive you are versus no. the 22 year old body on a 60 year old well with gray hair i think that's kind of dependent upon a lot of different factors but in general usually what you know if you're looking at a stranger objectively usually the two things you're focusing on are their body and their face because you don't know them personality wise to be factoring that into the equation obviously if you're with somebody and there's love involved and all that good stuff then that's a whole different factor that goes into finding somebody attractive but you know when you're just talking random strangers you see in the street <laughs> you're you're looking at people's faces and bodies to determine attractiveness i think i've got you pegged here i think i've got you figured out here so, okay, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just talk about this then for a second. I, with my, with, with, with my boyfriends mm -hmm. um, in the past, I've been like, oh, I want them to be so physically fit. I didn't really, for me, like a 22 or a 25 year old even is thin most of the time. I always envision them as being thin people, thin get like um lanky kind of bones hanging all over the place so i just want my boyfriend to be like ripped and is he like an athlete does he look like an athlete and like not a football athlete because different but yeah. like a that's too big no no yeah too big right too big for me yeah. not my not my vibe but um you know you want your boyfriend to look like i did anyway i wanted i wanted him to look like a superhero Physically. Okay. Yeah. When I got in my relationship with Kirk and I, I knew that I wanted that type of body anyway, when I, when, you know, first met Kirk, he had that body. I was like, Oh, you've got a great body. Love, oh, it's amazing. And he still has a great body. Mm -hmm. But when he, when he gains a bit of weight and he's kind of got the love handles and he kind of has a little bit of a bigger butt 
and he looks wider. So, you know, the dad bod, he doesn't have a dad bod, but I'm just saying it's a little bit more on the softer side. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love it. And I know that this dad bod thing has to do with like, it's centered around 40 to 50 year old men or something like that. Like that, that's the time, like you get a little beer belly and your arms get soft, you get the love handles and blah, blah, blah. I don't like it all the way to the dad vibe, the dad bod, which I think is completely sexist and terrible, but I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like that necessarily, mm -hmm. but I do like a little bit of thick, a little bit of, you know, um, experience, you know, a, a little bit of, um, blubber, huh? Blubber. No, don't say blubber. It sounds like, <laughs> oh my God. You like but a little like bit of padding? A little bit of padding there, you know, to be like, wow, he's a, he's this big, strong man and he's not a hundred percent perfect, which I don't really, for me, they don't have anything to do with age. They have more so to do with like what I consider healthy. Yeah. Well, like when I look look at him like I'm like oh if he looks like a superhero he must be healthy right mm -hmm. but then the older I've gotten I'm just like yeah but if he's got a little bit of like softness in areas it's like he's still he might not be extreme but he keeps up yeah and you know um is experienced has a little bit of I don't, I don't want to say I don't, <laughs> don't want to say you know, um, pudge or anything like that. Cause it's not really pudge. It's just, you know, a little softer on the edges, I'd say. That's what yeah. I want to say. So there, there's less, uh, there's less pressure for you to look perfect if he doesn't look perfect. <laughs> no, cause I'm always going to do stuff for me. You know what I mean? But, um, and I've always been with in, in relationships where, um, men have appreciated me being like thick as opposed to being thin. So like, I, I've never had to worry about, oh They've my never gosh. seen you thick though. The, the boyfriends I've been with? Yes, they have. When? What? When? When? Kurt's never seen you thick. Ah, uh, he has seen me thick. When did you put on weight? I was, you've been skinny yeah. for like eight years. I know, right? 2000, um, 2000, 14, 15, I was mm. not probably the size that I was when I was at Purdue, but um, I was, I was pushing it. I was pushing it around. The weird thing and is like when, when I met you at Purdue and you were probably at your thick phase then, I didn't really think, I, was, I mean, I thought you were thick in like a good way, but I didn't think you were like needed to lose weight thick. But ooh, I was then, definitely about a cheeseburger away from... <laughs> But you lost, like, how much weight did you lose when you moved out to LA? Oh, my God. I like 20, 30 pounds? Yeah. Because I remember the first time I saw a picture of you, like, a year later, I was like, what the? Whoa. I was like, is she I eating? <laughs> you lost like a lot of weight. I did. But, you know, not the way you think. I got I actually got really sick. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, yeah. I got really sick. I got a um, stomach infection for, like, almost a year, and they couldn't diagnose it. So I was just, like, withering away. And I was eating. Yeah, because you looked so, even skinnier than you are now, I think, with that time. I was. Yeah, I was. I was really unhealthy. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad they figured out that stomach intestine thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was terrible. It was terrible. But whatever. What, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is um, you know, 40 is the new sexy. 25 doesn't mean shit for women. That's right. And, 30 can 30 is basically the new 20 and you know gray hair gray hair don't care you know what i mean like gray hair don't care right. i remember there was a minute when like gray hair was a thing do you remember when that was like a whole thing oh yeah For a little bit where it was like hip to have gray silver hair i even had it i had a gray silver wig oh, did, was, oh yeah, yeah yeah the silver yeah yeah yeah, it's fun and there are apparently know. some people that actually have silver hair. Like yes. I I just learned that when I was kind of doing a little bit of research for this today and I was like, huh, this is fascinating. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how rare that is because I've never met somebody with silver hair before. That yeah. There was that guy on American Idol like ten years ago or whatever. 
Oh, was there? Like, he was like 30, but his hair was like completely gray because he had some kind of, I don't know, his hair like turned gray when he was like 20 because of some, I don't know, condition or something. Okay. But. Anderson Cooper, he, no. he's, he's his silver hair. Yeah. Guys could do it though. I don't know. Like when guys get gray hair, it's not that big of a deal, but for some reason, especially like in positions where you're going to be on camera, it's like women are not allowed to have, I don't know. It's like an unspoken rule. Like, cause I've never seen a woman go gray that's on TV, but you see guys do it and nothing happens. Yeah. It's because it, males determine what's sexy and you know, you, 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 you nailed it. You were like, she is 60 with a 22 year old body. And that's what it is. That's it's such an unconscious thing, but it's like, you guys are the ones to dictate what is, you know what I mean? And, and being young and being youthful and having, you know, a not gray hair. So having a brown, you know, brown hair, or whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, is that's, that's what it is. Why do you need to be sexy to tell me what's going on in the world or what's going on in sports though? Like that's <laughs> something I've never understood. Like, I don't care how sexy you are when you're telling me information. I care about how sexy you are when you're trying to like, I don't know, be sexy. Like when I want to see, I don't know, it's weird. Like <laughs> there's certain things I don't understand why sex appeal is factored in, but. I do. Cause I think you pay more attention when a sexy person's talking. That's true. Cause you, you're just like looking at them like, wow. <laughs> and you might not even be paying attention to what they're saying, you know, but exactly. <laughs> you're looking, you're looking, yeah. you know, Fox I love doing this for a while. <laughs> What'd you say? said Fox News has been doing this for like a decade. Like they just hire supermodels to get on there and just spout like the most racist, homophobic stuff. And you're like, you don't even realize what they're saying until like 20 minutes in. You're like, wait a minute, what'd she just say? <laughs> yes. Yes. I was just about to say that Fox News has nailed that shit. And it's like, every time I watch them, I'm like, holy shit. Do the anchors just continue to get hotter? Like, where do they find these women? Like, where are they? Because I don't remember anyone studying political science it, it, at Purdue, who was like really interested in like the way they, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. had pretty women who studied political science, but you know, we weren't out there like, yeah, you know, like we, I, 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 oh my God, I don't understand. I don't understand how this is like, and like, um, even like states, statesmen and women, congressmen and women, they mm -hmm. look broke as hell in comparison to all these fucking anchors. So I'm just like, where are they finding these women? Mm -hmm. Do yeah. they have them like locked up in a basement somewhere? And they're like, you, you, Wednesday, 730. This is your time for the next 10 years. <laughs> a number of the ones at Fox News were actually former like Miss America pageant contestants too. Like multiple ones of them were. I was like, wow. You never hear those ladies when they're up there for the Miss America pageant being like, I want to be a political commentator. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But the guys, they, they aren't getting hotter. They just keep staying like middle-aged pudgy white guys. It's like, hmm. <laughs> the girls keep getting younger and hotter. The guys just keep getting older and more creepy. That's how it goes. You guys determine what's sexy. And on that note... We'll see you next week. Next week. Oh my God. Orange is not my new black.